I mean, honestly. Who looks at Nunu and is like, yep, that is the strongest unit TFT has ever had. That's crazy. Before we begin, I just want to shout out these people for joining my membership. If you want to join them, feel free. And if not, and you just want to support the channel, just subscribe and like the video. Even though Nunu might be a god of TFT, even some gods have humble beginnings and Nuno is no exception. When he first came in, people didn't really know what to do with him. Do you build him tank? Do you build him AP? It took a little while for the hybrid build to become what people gravitated to. They put so much damage into his ability and alongside Vega, Reroll Elderwood became sort of a staple of the set. The Elderwood stacks gave Nunu infinitely more value. And if you got a mage spat, it made him even better. This is where the first real inklings of the demon started to emerge. In 4.5, with the ability power buffs in set 4, after a few Elderwood stacks, he would completely dominate and be impossible to kill. And if you're feeling particularly saucy, you could just play 8 Brawlers with a little bit of Elderwood. That way you didn't have to build HP items, you just got all of the stats from the Brawler buff and you could just slap on a lot of AP items and just kind of win. Maybe a gun blade or whatever. Set 5, he returned as a, just a bit of a reskin. Although he did fit into a few comps, he was hit with a few nerfs here and there to try and tone down his oppressive nature, because with the right items and a 3 star, he could still destroy teams, even without Elderwood, but what let him down were the shadow items. Having so many more items on the roster, with them giving negative effects, it was a lot harder for Nunu to have the same level of impact. But that changed when they introduced the Radiant items. In set 5.5, he started off a bit weak because people hadn't experimented enough. But with a few buffs and a little bit of experimentation with the right Radiant items, he gained popularity and people realised he was an absolute god. So Wright laid down the hammer with a 30 over 90 mana nerf. To get into the first cast was kind of quick, but subsequent casts after that would take a lot longer, so he could no longer chain eat the enemy frontline. Now it's more of a pump and dump onto one unit strategy rather than eat the entire board. And it's been fluctuated between 1800 and 1750 damage. The Radiant items were still kind to him, opening up a plethora of builds he could work with. His dominance did wane a little bit in the set, only for a little bit. Set 7 came back but this time with much lower numbers. This was probably to compensate for the old Nunu problems. Aside from the first patch, he didn't see that much action because Dragon Meta was so good and there were just so many other units that would fit the Dragon Monster fantasy a lot better than Nunu did. It was only if you got like an insane Mirage or you had insane items or you high rolled into it. It wasn't just about him, it was also about Deja as well. And all he existed at that time was kind of like a Mirage or Cavalier trait bot. But that all changed in set 7.5 and this was Nunu's set. This is the set that you think about when you think of Dragon Monster Nunu or Nunu in general. When he could eat 3 star 4 cost, eat 3 star 7 cost without even blinking. Which is simply crazy because this is also the time when he had the lowest base damage on his ability. The Cavalier trait gave him all the stats he needed and the insane Dragon Monster trait gave him all the health and AP that was necessary for him to be a god. But it wouldn't last forever and with two patches Riot gave him the 1-2 punch and removed his true damage and he faded back into obscurity. Until set 8, when he returned as the highest cost he's ever been, a 5 cost, reminiscent of set 2 Singed or set 3 Aesol and other roaming type champions. Or 
Also, he was a mascot, so he could be used in a ton of comps and just have pretty good value. But in set 8, he wasn't really that strong as a unit. It was basically just something you splashed if you hit or you felt like playing it, or you hit his hero augment, which made him feel a lot better, but it was quite rare, and it wasn't even that good. I mean, it was fine, but it wasn't that good. But in 8.5, they added a stun and more damage, meaning as a unit, he was actually incredibly useful. He could CC entire boards while he ran around laughing at your enemies. Plus, they buffed his hero augment, so if you ever got his carry or support augments, you felt good playing him because now either you got a team-wide AP buff or he got more AP over time. It wasn't the strongest iteration of Nuno, but it was still pretty good. And that brings us to today. Nunu has returned, and this time as a 2 cost, and with a similar ability to his early days, and they also added hero augments. This is smart, because as a 2 cost, you can dial back the numbers, but with a hero augment, you can make him incredibly powerful, and this basically means that they can actually increase the power budget of his augment because it's rarer to accomplish, and with him just being a 2 star, you have to hit the augment, you have to hit the 3 star for him to hit that insane threshold, which is good, it makes Nunu able to be strong but in a much rarer circumstance. And with Honey Monster Nunu, it now means that people can kind of get a glimpse of what it was like to play back in the old days and really feel how oppressive this unit actually was and experience that insanity for themselves. I think that 12 Nunu will be a fantastic take on the old Nunu because I don't think Riot will ever let that monster happen ever again. <laughs>